Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's our pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 International Nine Ball Open. Thank you. The International Nine Ball Open is a Pat Fleming production. It's being brought to you by AccuStats, and we're glad to have you with us for the championship match. This will be one race to 13 games to crown the champion. When we do this, we do it in the Simonis Aramith Arena at the Sheraton Norfolk Waterside Hotel. Our hosts for four years, we want to thank them for our, their hospitality. And once again, we also want to thank our industry partner, the best in the business, Diamond Billiard Products, for providing us with these tables for all our events. Thank you, Diamond, for what you've done to put this event on and support AccuStats and Pro Pool. <laughs> 128 players came, 126 of them have gone home. There's two men left and we couldn't have a better final. I just want to again remind you, one race to 13, we're going to go ahead and introduce our two finalists right now. We're gonna dispense with the credits and the accomplishments and the sponsors. We've got more important business to do right here. So let's first just say, from the Philippines, ladies and gentlemen, do we please welcome Robocop, Dennis Orcuyo. His opponent, truly a great, great player, ladies and gentlemen. Would you kindly welcome from Austria, Albin Ocean. All right, here we go. Your official timekeeper, Mr. John Baker. Your official presiding over this match, Mr. Ed Ladawi. We're going to send it upstairs to the A-team, the best in the business, the voice of AccuStats, Billy and Cardona, and USA Moscone Cup captain, Double J, Jeremy Jones. Go ahead, guys. Well, thank you, Kenny, and what a final we're in store for here. This is the climax of the International Open, the final between Alvin Ocean and Dennis Urkulo. Uh No two have played better. I mean, <clears throat> some unfortunate things for a few other semifinalists. James Aronis, an awesome showing, and SVB, he's always down in there. What do you think, Billy? Yeah, we've waited all week for this, you know, and really we couldn't have asked for a better finals match with uh, – with Ocean and, and, and Dennis Herculo. This is really going to be a really a closely contested match, and I do really believe that. I actually picked Ocean to win the, the event yesterday, but when I watched Herculo play today, I, I might want to change my mind, you know, uh, but uh, I got to stick who I, who I originally picked. I even, even though uh, I'm having a little bit of a different feeling, but I got to stick with it. Well, that's what any of these guys would do. They'd make you think twice. And uh, now Orkulo, who I thought showed a lot of heart. Uh, James Aranas showed a lot of heart in that early match. Really just a couple shots uh, kind of changed the momentum, and Dennis was there to pounce. Now to break in game number one. Arnie caught it a hair thin. I don't know if the four passed the line to, no, to I comply. I don't think, think it, it did. did. No, now, one thing for Dennis, which is much different than most players that we saw in the semifinal, he pocketed the corner ball and the one a lot. And the three-point rule kind of goes away if you pocket two. Now, a little bit of an angle here on the two ball, but he's got a number of options. He can go with a high ball to the top rail. He can draw the ball, it looks like, to the side cushion. I think, oh, he's heavy enough. He can just float. Nice shot. Yeah, some, sometimes from our vantage point, it's difficult to see the type of angle he actually has. But, uh, you know, the, those two options that you said he had, possibly that they, they were options if providing he had a, 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 deep, a steeper angle. That's right. And uh, if I give him time, the crew... Here with Pat, they do a great job. They're really on top of it. Now a little bit of probably the most work he's got to do, maybe killing the cue ball on the five, holding for the six. Do you take a chance and try to draw underneath the nine here off the side rail? No. That way you'll be in perfect line for the for the five to stay down table for the six. 
Yeah, but it's like we talk about. You got to make a nice decision. Do I work a little harder on this one shot, or do I just work a little harder on the next couple? And one thing that Albin really utilizes is the drag stroke. Now he's looking about coming above it, and that's the other option that a lot of players won't look at. That hey, if I get a hair steep, come a hair above it and cut the six and move the cue ball off the six instead of taking a chance. Exactly. I, I do think he's laying a little thin on the five, so he's probably going to have to go up table with the cue ball and opt to play that one rail. Well, he, well, he wanted. He actually played that into the nine, which was a, a good hit. I thought very natural, also. Little funny here, just because of the slick felt, and he's a little thin to really control drawing it, right, Billy? Yeah, you, you can't. almost, yeah, you almost want to go up table two cushions. Yeah, he's going to really spin it and try and pinch it a little bit. So watch out. That's what I would have been afraid of, just escaping the nine. Right. Now the one thing he did is he hit it slowly to try and let the right English grab as much as possible. If you hit that a little harder, it doesn't grab. It could come right up behind the nine. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Sacrificing a little distance on the seven, but shouldn't be a problem. And very uncanny to me how this is uh, starting somewhat like the SVB semifinal with a non-complying break right. uh, from Oban's, uh, uh, Oban, Alvin's uh, opponent. And Shane uh, actually was non-compliant a couple times in that match. Like three. Yeah, and, and he was breaking him with, with a lot of force, a lot of velocity, but yet he wasn't able to get two balls past the head string. Yeah, and then when he did, actually, he had a couple of kisses on the cue ball, which sent the cue ball, uh, you know, scratching on the break a couple of times. Yeah, so the break is what really cost him the match. His inability to comply and also the couple scratches that he had. And if, if you make that many errors off of the break, and then some of them were unforced, but if you make that many errors off the break, you don't figure to win, especially when you're playing a, a great player like Ocean. Yeah, not only that, as far as figuring, it's not something you hear a lot um, after a Shane match, right? The, you know, <laughs> you know, that's not I mean, something he's going to come away with saying very often just because, you know, he's always the guy that breaks well usually and figures it out, Yeah, you know, even more than others or more than most. For sure. He's won so many matches because of his break. Yeah. So when he when he ha happens to lose one, he really can't really think too badly about it. Yeah. All right. And just like huh, identical to the semifinal of uh, you know the last semifinal, a non-complying break from Dennis, just like Shane, and then a dry break from Albin. Yep. Oh. Talked about it before. I know the Filipinos kick great. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's hard to say anybody kicks better. But it seems like when someone needs to make a big kick shot, it's Albin. Man, he really does it awfully well. Always hitting the right side of the ball. Picks out a, a good route for the cue ball. So I wonder if that'll play in you know Dennis's mind on trying to play a little more devastating safeties. Yeah. Tricky little position he's in here. I think he's looking to go up table with the cue ball behind the four. Four or the seven? Uh, the, a four, I believe. That's tough. Oh, the seven is better, huh? Well, it's just a, more, broad, I, it's a broader ball, right? Yeah. So. I didn't, uh, he, Ooh, it leaked. I, I, yeah, I thought he had uh, a different type of an angle. I thought he could hit the one ball thickly and then he could go up behind the four, but that shot obviously played out a lot better, but this time it did leak out. Yeah. He's giving <laughs> him an, a, a shot on it. He, he's going to probably go for the pocket here, do you think? Maybe, and ironically, that shot behind the seven was more about being able to contain the one. You know, the, if going behind the four was possible, but you had to really move the one a lot more. Nice shot there. And he's cut off the kick up table, which is really how you want to kick at this. Nothing wrong with kicking underneath it, but uh, not as easy to get safe, I don't think, having to kick underneath it. Uh, both balls will go up table than kicking underneath it. Usually. Yeah. If you, you can come two rails where maybe you get separation, you just got to make sure you don't count, contact the two going by. In fact, I like the two rails myself. So have to it, aim away with a little spin, a little right spin, and come two rails behind it. You could easily separate them that way. 
But going two reels, don't you hit the one thinly and run the risk of scratching in the upper corner? Well, no, I think with if you want to aim away with the right spin, you can hit the bottom of the one off two rails, I think. Like that. Yeah. And try and get a little separation. Yeah. If you cut it even thinner, you got a lot of good things that can happen. Yeah. I actually didn't think that he could get to the bottom of it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Hit, well he aimed away and put more a lot more right spin on it to create that angle. I think naturally he couldn't get at the bottom of the one with no spin, but all right, he's got a couple options. Super thin to control the speed and the line of the cue ball, or yeah. super hard when you're going super thin. So he may kick behind this trying to bang the one around and stick the cue ball. Yeah, sometimes it's so thin that maybe kicking would be a better option. I think that's one of those times. Yeah, totally. Now, if he could confidently get to the top rail with the cue ball, cutting the one he would and he would come down you know the right rail right with the cue ball yeah exactly now this one requires a pretty full hit and he may have to spin into it with a little left along with draw now he would like the one ball to escape that into the table going too quick he would like to end up behind the seven yeah he gets a pretty good feel usually yeah that's a beauty there even if he gives up a small piece, great yes, hit. nicely executed. And uh, from our vantage point, and looking at the monitor, it doesn't appear that he can see it, he, and obviously he can't, so no. he's addressing the table uh, to kick here. And when the guys, you know, you can see him kind of bounce up and off the ball a little bit, Alvin trying to get a real feel for that kick shot. You know, he is adding a little side spin, so there's a little calculation involved, but not a whole lot, believe it or not. And what type of speed, if you were a cooler, would you kick the one ball with? Well, I don't want to hit. Try and hit it thin. So I think a draw stroke, medium, hit it full, send it at the two. You can actually come across and get the cue ball back behind the four and three if you hit the top side of it. And if you hit the top side of it, possibly the one will go into the, the nine or the six, maybe, and then it can go up table behind the four or three. Yeah, the high ball's the tougher one to me to control. You could leave. Uh, yeah, that that one was asking a lot, I thought, anyways. Yeah. Uh, you know, guaranteed hit, but I kind of like his chances hitting it with draw also with speed, with a little more umph. I like it with draw simply because you you, you, you could possibly go behind a 4-3 with draw. Exactly. And you're going to get probably much more distance after you execute that type of a shot with draw. Plus the chance of fluking something in a little more, right? I mean, a little bit. That as well, yeah. You know, it's a pretty shot, too, when you draw off that ball. It's kind of like an umbrella and three cushion, right, Billy? Kind of draw and turn the yeah. ball backwards off the one. Now he's got a slow draw up the rail unless he wants to play the combo. No, I, I expect him to go up the rail here. And he's got a little angle, though, so he's got to hit it easy and let it take. Right. Somewhat similar to that shot that you were describing, uh, hitting it softly with the spin. The spin will take more right. off the cushion. Well, if you hit, if you hit the draw stroke softly, you give it time to take, you know, the, the draw stroke to take. Yeah, what happens is it just takes initially off contact instead of, you know, if that ball gets into the rail quickly, the draw is gone. And now he's in a good position. He's still got to work. This, he's got to play the six up long. He could play the open those balls up, but I don't feel like that's what he's thinking right now. No, he has a, he, uh, he has a choice to make here. One rail. Does, either, does he play right? the angle to go into the 9-6? The but they're both the same. This is the one he didn't want. He let up on the stroke. Yeah. And now he's going right. the worst way possible. The angle actually to get on the 5 to get on the 6 is almost the same angle as opening them. So the good thing about keeping that angle is you can make a decision then. Now he's in big trouble. Yeah, he definitely has an angle that he uh, that he didn't want. He can't go cross table because of the aid. Possibly he's got to he's got to go cross table, up table, cross table here. Watch this stroke. He's going to catch a piece of the eight and still get below it or into it. I think. He's got to not let up. Yeah, he's going to get stuck though. So I thought he'd put a little more speed on that myself. Just you know. Yeah, that, that was. A, you you got options if you if you get the cue ball free. Yeah, that was a horrible angle. He ended up with. 
And I'll tell you, we need our referee on top of this one. If he does come to the low rail, which, you know, I think that's about it. Now, he's looking more toward the fouling on the seven ball with his body as opposed to looking at the, at the hit. Yeah. The referee, that is. Oh, well. Nice hit, but then is happy to have this opportunity in game two. Just so solid, Dennis, right? Uh, he's just a beautiful player to watch play. and He just continues just to get out and get out and get out. Uh, and when he plays uh, his matches, not tournament matches, other matches, he makes games that he has to run out of the back. <laughs> and he does. You have to play him because he has to run out of Iraq to beat you. And that's what he does. Right. Well, now tied up at one. I, the way I put it as far as Dennis is, you know, I'm not sure he's the, you know, out of all the tools you need to play great professional pool, you know, the highest level. And there's several of them, those tools. I wouldn't say he's the best at any of them, but I'd say he's top three in almost all of them. You know, I mean, really, I mean, it's not, I'm not taking anything away from him. I mean, you could argue he's the straightest shooter, but it's, I, I don't know for sure. Uh, you could argue he's the best cue ball, but uh, I don't know for sure. Patterns, kicking, you know, I'd say he's probably not the best breaker. He's a great jumper, but I wouldn't say he's the best. But he sure seems like, like I said, he's top two or three in all categories. But when you say you don't know for sure. Of course you don't know for sure. It's him against the world. Right. Okay. Of course you don't know for sure. Right, exactly. So it's a, yeah, but, it, it could, but it, the thing is, that's the, that's the powerful part of the statement. It is him against the world, and I still don't know for sure. Yeah, well, well yeah, you can't give him the benefit of the doubt. Right, right, exactly. So, you know, you got to give the rest of the world some credit. Yeah, now he did amp him up a little more towards the end, middle and end of his match with Aranis. See, if he's not making that corner ball also, he may threaten a, a non-complying break, but now he's in huh, great position. Just perfect on the two. A little queuing over the six, but natural to get on the three. The four not far. Well, look how these connect after the first shot yeah. here, Billy. Well, he's good 95% to get out here. Yeah, look, the four, the five goes in the side, the six near, seven, and everything really nice. Yeah, I like this. Not saying he's he's not going to do it every shot. Go and look. That's just not Dennis. But I do like it here and there. Yeah, it's, it's crucial for you to get the right angle on the five, so you can just draw back or just stick there for the six to make the run out play simply simple. Yeah, now he's got to draw the ball a little bit, so. Gates pretty decent, pretty handy. Still want to make sure you're not getting straight and on the rail on the seven, that's for sure. And you want to draw two to the rail, then off of it. Now will just come one. He could come two, but I think he comes one. Yeah, one, there's no reason why he should go two. One, one sends him in a perfect line. I'd say that his pattern play is... The best? Yeah, pretty much. You know, <laughs> against the world, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, just the guy he's playing right now, some people argue are, is the best pattern play, you know. J.L. Chang, right? J Jun Lin Chang. Mm -hmm. You know him. He's one of the best as far as the patterns as well. I mean, just these are guys that are just students of the game when it comes to percentage uh, position play. One thing Dennis does, I think, as well as anyone when it comes to position, is he really matches it up with his game and his stroke and everything else and, and kind of his mentality when he looks at the shot. You know, not saying he goes overboard moving, moving the cue ball, but he doesn't want to take the, the let's say, uh, let me baby it route. He wants to make a nice fluid stroke. Oh, well, okay. He's... Uh... 
He's a, an intelligent, an intelligent player. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That, that's what it is. He's just an intelligent player. He understands what you know. He understands what, what shots are better to shoot. Yeah. You know, do I want to shoot a half tough shot now for an easier one later? Or sure, evaluating. Uh oh, ooh, cue ball was really dangerous there. Had a lot of speed on it, so that's usually going to involve that side pocket a little bit. Now, a bank shot on the one that I think he probably goes for because he's got a two ball that's tight, but it does go. And Albin's not afraid to be aggressive. But he may have an awkward angle. If he, if, if it's natural to go cross table with the cue ball, of course the bank is automatic because you have protection that if you happen to miss it. Well, the only protection on safety, to my, it looks like, is putting either the cue ball or the one ball behind the seven. So... I think it's okay. I think he has more worried about getting a little elevated, maybe shooting the two. Looks like he, he'll go cross table naturally here. Yeah. Playing it thick, but he can't let him see a piece of it, though. I don't think he did. I don't like playing it thickly like he did. I like going for the pocket. Even Me too. Hitting, even hitting the short rail, that'll give him more speed on the cue ball to get across table, utilizing both the two and the seven for protection if he happens to not make it. I agree totally, and and I think Alvin would tell you, a little fortunate to get the one ball hook here on the eight. If he lets him see a piece of this, like you said, not bringing the cue ball and not going for the pocket, well, he's going to get buried behind the seven with the cue ball, right? Right. So pretty fortunate to get the one ball hook. Now this is the type when they hit it, they make it a lot more than you think. Yeah, it's laying in a good, good position to be made about a quarter of an inch off the cushion. All right, I don't know. It looks like it's kind of opened up. A little different than the rest of the tournament. Same rules, same format, except for it's a race of thirteen here. Looks like he's going to be forced to go forward with the cue ball. With the, with, uh, he, I don't know. I he, think he can shave. I don't even know. shave off the eight. Not the worst thing, right? But I wouldn't want to. Yeah, it looks like his angles are a little awkward here. Yeah. May have to, he's look, look, he's going down. He might be able to draw by the eight. Yeah, he's going to throw this in. Yeah, that's why I said even oh, if he brushes okay, the eight, okay. it's not the worst thing. No. Because he wasn't ever, like, snap drawing it, like, real firm. You know, it's always going to be a slow draw, right? A little more of an angle than he couldn't have drawn it than he would have had to go forward. Yeah, not won't do too much here. Just gets out towards the center. Little one rail angle here is perfect. Come up. And, yeah, you, know. you come up toward the center of the table. Not quite, but to uh, the... And this is really where you look at the seven, it being very playable, right? You know, the, the five isn't off the rail. It isn't near the rail. It's off a decent piece, right? So, you know, he got it kind of as awkward as you could get. But yeah. you never want to get too extreme on the angle on the five and make it missable. You know, when you look at the seven being very playable, you got to look at balls ahead. Balls ahead will tell you no reason to take a chance and make a missable shot out of the five. You can always work the ball off the six to the seven in the side. He got a lot out of that, didn't he? He's got to be careful if he draws the ball here. Well, he doesn't mind following because he certainly doesn't mind moving the rock off the seven a couple rails for the eight. And that's called working through the rack instead of trying to get perfect. I mean, that's, I can't express it more to up and coming players. It's, it builds confidence. It calms you down when you work through the rack a little bit. And it kind of just always makes sense to me, Billy. Yeah, there's no reason to gamble and draw off the, uh, off the six. Take the little more difficult angle on the seven, but yet one you know you can handle. And when you do that, you, like you say, you build confidence in your, in your game. Yeah, and you really don't, don't try to, you know, set up missable balls like the five ball we were talking about. Now, if the seven's in a different position and very demanding to get a certain place on the six, well, things become a little different. 
Uh, yes, of course. All right, 2-2. Two, two. This is a race to 13, as opposed to a race to 10. Championship is a race to 13. And so many, so many years of experience in this audience. Not only as a bunch of fans, which I'm sure they play as well, but you know, guys like yourself and a bunch of big names on the teaching side of the game, playing side of the game, mix of both. A lot of uh, people in the industry in the room, always nice to see. Now Dennis Arculo of the Philippines to break game number five. All right, still sticking to that pretty decent-sized cut. He's making the corner ball and the one a lot, though, right? So shave this, Billy. And yeah, use shave the, it. Yeah, use the four it. nine. Yeah. Use the five nine. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, it, it's 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 hard to go wrong with that with that option, and <clears> and you could get behind the four as well with it, or or the eight. Yeah. You hit it, but you want to hit it very thinly. Yeah, it depends on how you want to hit it. If you want to move the two a hair more, you can just hit high. I wouldn't threaten a scratch by the four, though. That's one thing I would make sure is never going to happen. This is going to open up for a little bit of a look at the two. But that's about all he could do. He could have hit it thinner, of course, mm -hmm. and let the two not get as far. But this is very tough. Great look there. Yeah, but the problem with hitting it thinner, and, and you know, it, 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 then, you, then that scratch in the upper corner becomes more possible. Yeah. And which he definitely wanted to stay away from, like you mentioned. I don't think he can get at the two enough to, like, shoot the two into the three and try and let bo both balls escape and hold the cue ball. I don't think he can get at, can he get at the right side of the two and do anything with it? I mean, that's a great mm -hmm. camera view right there. I but don't think he can from my vantage point. He's, yeah. Not sure what he's doing. Is he just mildly trying to go behind the nine with a bunch yeah, of spin? Yeah, I think that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to go behind the nine with the cue ball here. Nope. Oh, okay. He may end up in, in behind the six here. I'll tell you what. No, no such luck. Huh? He was really thinking he could hold the two right where it was at with the three, you know what I mean? And then try to move the rock. And what happens is it does, I mean, you could see as hard as he hit it, the two only moved over about six inches, right? Seven inches. So it, he didn't cut it much. It was just that smudge. Yeah. If you cut it even a little bit, you're going to get some movement from the two. And right. if you cut it more than you intend to, then you have no chance of, uh, of, of the shot working out. I was wondering if he was going to do something like this. And I, was, I thought he would go four long rails, not tight. You know what I mean, Billy? Like... Bottom rail, side rail, yeah, end rail, side rail, instead of the side rail first off the third rail? If he thought he could comfortably do that, I guess he would have done that, but uh, maybe apply a little bit of inside English going long. Yeah, but that made me think he was more worried about pocketing the ball. He, which, he'll go behind the nine, the 5-9 here, right? Oh, yeah. Very natural shot. Well, he's taking dead aim, I'll tell you that. A little hot with the cue ball. Yeah, he's allowed the uh, cue ball to escape the area that he wanted to end up in. But this is no bargain here. He's you know he's uh, he's going across the ball. And he's going to have to hit it thinly, and it's going to be very difficult to do that considering the angle that he has. Yeah, he hit one last night that was real nice, super thin. Wow. Did he hit it? No, he did not. At oh. least from my vantage point, he didn't. That's the second time I've seen that. I, I watched uh, Arenas do Arenas, it. yeah. He, he missed the entire ball, too, in his match against Ocolo. It's funny. I was just thinking about that shot before this match started, and I was thinking about turning points, you know, in that match in the semifinal, and that shot right there, and when he made a really nice shot and barely got snookered, yeah. that also cost him, but... I was kind of figuring out why that happens, and of course, what it is, it's, you know you have to have a thin hit to have any success, so you kind of push it a little bit. 
Yeah, but it's, it's very, very rare when a player misses the entire ball. No, it is. And, 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 and they, all the players know that, yeah, I need a real thin hit, but it's very rare when they miss the entire ball. Yeah, but at this level, it'd be like thinking you some that would never happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but that the thing is, you know, I equate it to like a golfer with a pitch shot. They know they have to hit it here to get it close, and if they don't, it looks real bad. Oh my, that's way light. Pretty. He was really worried about the scratch, huh, Billy? Possibly. He didn't want to put any side spin. He's right. But uh, he's he's uh, he's one of the better ball strikers in the world. Absolutely. Not sure why he got up. He looked at a fan. Better pocket. <laughs> yeah, if if I could choose a player to bet on, you know, one the player that never gives up, who is an excellent player, has a lot of heart, just never gives up never gives up, it would be him. Yeah. It would be him. Yeah, I remember uh, when I first saw him, Cardiff, around 2003, maybe? Something like that, 2004 in the World Nine Ball Championships. He was the talk of the town. You know how ever so often there's a New Filipino player that we're here about has beaten all the other ones back in the Philippines, and that's how kind of it was with Urcullo. It yeah, didn't take long I to remember. see why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember when he first came to the United States as well. Ocean not backing off. He's going to get heavily rewarded here on this break shot. Going to get really a kind of a ball in hand shot, it looks like, on the two, just to kind of pinch it up for the four. It's made two on the break. Two, right. But you notice he's going past the side with the cue ball. He's hitting the one much more full. Still getting the one in the side, but he's not threatening that non-complying break at all, really. He's getting movement up the table by multiple balls. Okay, he's got a really smooth stroke when it comes to these, so he can hit them a few different ways. This one, one rail cross and holding off the second rail. Looks doable, not quite so natural, Billy. Uh, he'll apply a little left hand English. Slow here. it down a little bit. Yeah. Or... Nice shot. Knowing he could come some two diamonds off. Now he's perfect, just one rail. Up yeah. to the center of the table. Nice angle to drop nicely for the six. Seven to front of the lower left hand pocket. Well, he saw what I saw a couple times yesterday. That top rail just kind of coming off a little hot. You could see him kind of raise his hand there a little bit. Not saying he's bad, it was just something a little alarming to him. He wants to actually position the cue ball. Sort of like where it is now, maybe a little sort of right of that. I'll hit the, hit the thickness of this ball, go to the side rail. He's coming all the way for the side. You think he is? I, well, I, he I, just I, looked at the eight in the side, so oh, that tells me he's probably coming one rail. I kind of like playing this at the eight in the corner. I do too. I mean, these guys rarely make the mistake with it, but he's going to get a little funny now. Not bad. Oh, he's okay. Thought he was going to lay on the rail a little bit more. Yeah, we're just moving along, three apiece. Yeah, I like playing position for the eight in the corner because he, you know you're going to have good speed with the cue ball. You hit the side cushion. Either angle will suffice on the eight. You know, you can, and the nine's right there. Actually, if you even stop the cue ball where the eight was, you would, you would have a nice shot on the nine. So I think it, it, you, you're going to get out of really a high percentage of the time. Because it's, it's so easy to play shape that, that way, you know. 
Yeah, and I think, you know, I'm a big corners guy, but I think things have changed a little bit with the equipment, moving the ball pretty easy and in control uh, off of those kinds of angles, right? Um, I probably, like yeah, like you, still go for the corner, just kind of what it was ingrained in my head. But I do, you know, I don't see Alvin really doing that too often, really forcing for an easier shot. It really is something, for one reason or another, he believes in the play, and that's fine. All right, two on the break, so that's going to be okay. The two's going to the in rail, though, so nothing offensive for RoboCop. I don't think, anyways. You never know with this guy. Tough situation he's confronted with here. Yeah, tough safety, for sure. I don't think he can play a safety from this spot. I think he's got to push. But if, if he pushes, it's still going to be a hard decision to make. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to shoot from here, you know? No, if you, if, just if I, would, around, yeah, I wouldn't want has. to shoot from here. I would push, and maybe uh, Ocean will take this shot, because I, I wouldn't want to shoot. Well, he can definitely bank the two down left of the nine with some kill trying to use the seven and... Not saying it's great, but it's not terrible. Or he could just slowly put the two past the seven. I think that's a more dangerous shot on the side rail, which I think that's what he's doing. Dangerous shot. You're not going to get a hook here. Well, you might. I mean, you don't figure to get a, a, a hook, but he's trying to leave it awfully tough. I think he did okay. Yeah, he made a nice <coughs> shot there. He certainly cut off the angle. Or he the cut pocket off, the ball. Uh, half the, almost half the ball he cut yeah. off as well. So he, he really did a good job considering where he shot from. Excellent. And a big part of it, cue ball on the rail. That cueing, trying to... Now, if he's off the rail, he can thin this ball with left English and try and bring you back to a similar position. But being on the rail makes it super tough. Do you look for him to... Uh, I think he's going for the five, go, going go, behind the five. Going three cushions? I was going to say, you're going three cushions with the cue ball here? Well, he, it doesn't look like he's hitting very very much speed to me. So, But you never know with Alvin. Oh, he could see it to bank it. What a shot. Well, then there's no choice there. Because there yeah. certainly wasn't a, a good safety there. No, not at all. And, and the bank looked like it was laying pretty good. Providing that he could see it, like, you know, we didn't know if he could see it. But if he could see it, it looked like the angle that he had was a good angle. Yeah, he wasn't really contemplating much safety overall. What I see, he was really figuring out how he wanted to shoot the bank. And he hit it perfect, really, like I said, nice aggressive stroke. One thing that will bode well for Dennis if he falls behind a couple games. He was down 6-3 in the semifinal before charging back. Yeah, and as good as Arenas was playing, I didn't think Okula was going to win that match. I didn't either. You know? And Arenas was playing really, really well. Yeah, what some shots he made. Some banks on the two. Jump banked one in long rail. All right, wants to stay off the rail mainly. Love to get straightish on this, but main thing is stay off the rail so you can work the cue ball, the seven and eight, very playable. And if you can remain calm, you know, I mean, players, you always talk about, oh, I don't want all this cue ball movement. Well, who does? But when you can remain calm, these aren't difficult plays for these guys. So that's why you'll see him play with a little more guarantee at times versus trying to really move the ball unnecessarily to try and just improve the shot a little bit. You're going to go twice across the table here? Or uh, can draw he it kills back? it. He kills it usually, yeah. Really? Like that. Yeah. He's fine. Yeah, the eight's closer to the pocket than I, yeah, these than I thought. Guys aren't sweating this kind of shot. for the 4-3 lead. He will be breaking. 
in the next game. And something I brought up in our last match, Billy, with Mark and I, is, you know, maybe he's already won it because of his year, but, and, you know, but Alvin Ocean with a win here, I think he kind of solidifies uh, Player of the Year for 2021. He won the CLP, the Championship League Pool, by Matchroom, the, that new event. But then the big win with the World Nine Ball Championships. And now here, another incredible field brought to you by Pat Fleming and his staff at the International. So you could argue, you know, Yap had a, a great run at some tournaments, right? Didn't quite get there at the U.S. Open, though. Carlo Beato, who won the U.S. Open, but doesn't have the other you know, right. finishes he's like Alba. He's got multiple wins at major events. So, yeah. So it's hard to deny him. You would think, anyways. Yeah. Not sure how that goes exactly. I'm sure there's voters involved, so not everyone sees everything the same, but he's going to love this. you got to like the way he's breaking the balls, too. Well, that was like last night's break uh, that he kind of repeated every time. There's been a little variance today between the two matches he's played, but doesn't have to come down the table a whole lot for the three. He's yeah. got an open pocket. And that's, you know, that's really noteworthy there because the three is fairly close to the pocket. And when you really try to overpower a shot, sometimes you lose accuracy. So therefore, he doesn't have to come down all too, too far for the three. He'll still be aggressive, but he won't kill it. Oh, my. And the cueing, I think, really had a pretty big effect there but I didn't expect to miss and this may have gotten very goofy if this one is not cuttable onto the nine. Oh man this is tough Billy. Yeah he's, he's got a problem I don't think it passes the nine well he's going the wrong way into the six anyways what do you do do you, do you cut the one thin and go into the three to hold the cue ball can you make the billiard on the one three uh, no I mean, you could, but it doesn't sit very nice. I think no. he can make the billiard one oh, three. No. Look at the three, Billy. Yeah. Look I, where the one's at. I think it can no, do it. I mean, he would have to hit so much left spin and hit it. No way. And the one's too far advanced for that? Yeah, way too far. I would cut the one past the nine myself and go into the three and hold him. This is a tough combo here, ladies and gentlemen. Easily hit this thick. Yeah, he didn't hit any of them. That's how thin it was. Is he going to get lucky? He is. Well, now this got tough too, right? Yeah. The, the, Not a gimme by any The kiss means. shot's no gimme. The one's no gimme. You got to play the combination because you well, can hit the cue ball. If the one goes, you're going to play the one. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's playing the one. Okay, if the one no, goes. No, he's playing the kiss shot. You're right. No, I like the combination. Really? Yeah. Of course, I'm not at the table. <laughs> I'm not at the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, he made it look easy. It wasn't easy. I thought the combo and the kiss shot were both difficult. Uh -huh. Now four to four, so a bit of a break. Well, you know, if the if the carom was somewhat available or available, definitely I would play the carom. It, I thought the carom was tough. If a carom's tough, I'd rather play a, a Of course, the combo, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, therefore, the carom was natural to look like, so. Yeah, well, he hit it pretty sweet, too. Oh, he hits both shots sweet. Yeah, it's not like the one moved a ton. You know, one was just floating over that rail, so he had to play a pretty thin hit on the one and queuing next to the five ball. You can see our TPAs, 889, I think it was 929 for Orcullo. So a good, you know, what is that? 29, 11, 40 points higher. Yeah. I think he needs to go to a heavier hit. Don't let a complying break get to you here, non-complying break. I think that Ocean was uh, guilty of not doing what you suggested he should he should have done. What's that? Is he over, try to overpower. over hit it, huh? Yeah, yeah. He tried to over hit it. The one ball that is. Oh, he's not gonna comply. And we're playing no rollout. So like in this instance, hmm. Alvin doesn't like it, which I don't think he's gonna. Unless he sees something I don't. I this is going to be a difficult hit. Yeah, I think he can spin around the nine, though, between the six, nine, one, two, two cushions, maybe, maybe three. He's got to use the bridge, otherwise, if he's coming to the low, you know, the bottom cushion here with a lot of spin. Yeah, well, I think if you're going to, to take it on, you're going to have to shoot it softly then. Well, he's going to try to bend it with a little bit of English here. Yeah, he's going to put a lot of 
side spin. It will grab enough. He can't hit it very hard, obviously, but. Well, that's okay. As long as no, he... that's great. But, I mean, I'm, he's going to get the worst of it most likely. He's trying to, get, to go down on the cue ball to maybe curve it a little bit or make sure he's got a lot of inside on, the, on this cue ball. Well, if the seven wasn't there, which he wouldn't be snookered otherwise, that doesn't really then make sense. Run but, out. <laughs> yeah, but my point is he could kick a firm one three rails underneath it, you know, like, but with the seven being there, it's really not doing much. Got to get a rail. Oh, he's going to love doing oh that. My, oh, my. Wasn't that wonderful? He may have left a sliver, though. No, I don't think so. No, he didn't. You're I right. I don't think so. Yeah, it's very hard for him to even tie these balls up. I mean, doable, but he's he's going to be jacked up kicking at it. He's got to kick the two up the table. I don't think there's a, any other well, you can't viable put, option. I, you there. wouldn't tie the three and two up here? Well, he's going he's gonna to get the worst of it anyways. Well, I know that, but I mean, at least he can uh, probably get a little better kick shot than he just had, <laughs> is what uh, he's thinking, you know? All right. I'm going to try and feather this and go up table. You've got to be careful with that. I would come back by the six, but then you're fade, fading the jump cue. And he wants to put him behind the nine here. Yeah, by, by the six with the cue ball, right? Yeah. Where the six is. Got to be careful, though. A lot of things going on here. Ah, that's too much spin. Oh. Oh, he got a friendly bump. Sure did. Friendly bump. He sure did. He knew he missed it. And well, it's not often he he makes a mistake like that, ball in hand. You know, he's got an excellent cue ball, and in that time, it wasn't very good, but he got away with it. Well, I kind of feel the table's broken in even more, which makes sense, but the, the, the English is checking a little bit more off the rail. It looked a little hot anyways when he hit it. Like, yeah, if well, it didn't hit the nine, it was going by the nine for an opening on the two, but... Yeah. But very little slide anymore. Right. Now he's going to the air. So watch out cross side. The two ball. He may end up going behind the nine two here. If he yeah. I don't think he's going thin. I really don't. I think he's trying to knock the two away. That's what I would do. Yeah, that's what I would do. Thick. Oh, he made it. He went by the nine. <laughs> yeah, he sure did. <laughs> but he did it with a little more control than we ever thought he could, right? Yeah. Because he hit it thick and still controlled it back behind the nine. I thought you were thinking like a thinner hit on the two. No, I thought that, that was that's how it would, would work out. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he actually would try. Especially to... since you made that remark that the table's playing a little sharper now. Right, right. So therefore, it's that, that particular angle he had was conducive for, uh, to do exactly what he did. Yeah, he's just trying to maybe lag the three behind the four. Might come across on the eight. Oh, he hit it thin. He's not going to be happy with that. Well, we'll find out. Well, I don't think he's going to. Oh, he got a nice <laughs> roll you know here. I mean? <laughs> yeah, sometimes Jeez. when our balls are so close together, uh, a quarter of an inch can make the difference. Yeah, he can bank it, boy, but it sure is missable anytime it's this close. He's going to lay on it. E, I don't know. But I would have had to think about that one, Billy, before I laid on it. Not saying it's not the right shot, but I would have maybe looked it round at maybe getting a snooker somewhere. You know what I mean? I mean, he, I think there you got to work the clock a little bit and look around. Uh, he could have got the three out in the middle of the table, gotten behind the four. Could have done some things there. He, well, he, you know, he immediately went to this shot, like, uh, like he knows something. Of course, he knows something. Yeah, well, look where the three's at now. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, that. Yep. It's just not a shot you play very often at this level, and then when you do, you usually look around first and say, "Oh, I absolutely have nothing else. Let me just lay on top of this ball." So you think he's an underdog here? He's going to hit it softly and cross it. I think he might cut it in. Oh, he's going to cut it in? I think. That's what I think. Yeah. 
That's why I was asking. You think he's an honor dog well, to I, make it or not? I thought the point. I thought the side pocket had him there. Well, he just hits it better than a lot of people do, Billy. So well, you can't hit it if if it's on the angle of scratch. You can't hit it. <laughs> but it was, I thought that's. A, I thought it was on that angle where he could couldn't make it in the corner without scratching. Oh, well, so impressive was the cueing over the nine ball, right? Yeah. Still hitting it so yeah. clean, and a lot of people would over hit that. A lot, you know, very much committed to making that smooth stroke, increasing accuracy. Now he's a little further away, so he's going to have to work the cue ball. Um, I thought that he could have gone two cushions and got a lot closer to the six. Was well, he laying on a scratch angle or something? No, but you got to think of these guys. Think of that stretch. I see Alex pack a line a lot of times. Ooh. I said it the other day when I saw a mistake from Dennis on a three ball he scratched on that almost cost him the match. Maybe it was this, this afternoon. Yes, But it was. did you notice the, long br the open bridge for the long draw? It's the yeah, same well, thing with that three and, ball. And I agree with you there as well. I don't I wouldn't want to use an open bridge if I had to have any power at all into a shot. Yeah. I wouldn't want to use the open bridge. Well yeah, when you're close to it though, you can draw the ball with an open bridge and be fine. But from some distance it seems like I see the mistake. Not so much the miss, just like earlier on the three ball, but he didn't draw it near as much against Aranis and right there again. He didn't get enough draw against Ocean. Well, I was really surprised he didn't go with a high ball and get much closer to the six. Well, I agree you know, with cause that. Because he, he could have shot that with being right in off that off that side rail. Side rail easily. Well, this is trying to hold it. He may be trying to make this. Hard to hold it and hold the seven, so he may be going for the pocket. Wow, man, how good is his timing to be able to hold the ball that well? Now, he didn't get the snooker, but it was a pretty good effort. Yeah, it's a tough angle he's, he's looking at right here. you got to go forward. It's if a you, tough angle, though. Oh, if you go back, the ball wants to come off the rail. you got to force forward. If you forward. go forward, you might scratch. Yeah, but it's still the shot. You see how you just always, it's just too tough a shot from distance coming backwards. you got to force the issue, the envelope, push the envelope a little bit, Billy, and take your chances going forward. So it didn't matter what he did with that shot, go draw it or go forward, there were problems. Yeah, for sure. But he does real well at the forward. You know that. That wasn't so much on him. That's just saying the shot's super tough coming backwards with a froze ball. I understand what you're saying, but you have to you have to give him credit to know when he's at the table what's the best shot for him. No, I know, but I know the guy pretty well. And he initially got down with a high ball, and then he got back yeah. up and changed to the low ball. Right. Ocean to take that lead again. So some exchanges here in game number nine. Ocean will break at game ten. Nine oh nine and a eight eighty. So similar to our last match, even though Ocean went on to win, he shot a lower TPA than Shane. Well, Shane actually played in my opinion, a little bit better than Ocean did in that particular match. Yeah, after the break. It's mean. just faltering on the break to cost Shane the match. Yeah. You know? Yeah, with both playing over 900 at last semifinal. Actually, all four guys have played great today in our first two matches. And the one thing, you know, I think Pat, he, like he said, he's got some tough skin and he'll always take some advice from anyone. I think he'll tinker around with the, this format. But the one thing that I've seen is, oh, did he, he didn't comply here. Too many kisses in the center of the table. He's wondering how that happens. I don't think he complied. Did he make two? No. Yeah. So unless Dennis is hooked, he'll shoot from here, but. Um, one thing when you run a tournament, especially a pro tournament, one of the most important things is to put the players in the position to play their best pool. What you notice here is plenty of practice tables, uh, uh, you know, open early, stays open late for the guys. And the format coming down the end with the single elimination, I think he'll tour around with that. 
but it also gives these guys the best time and the best chance to play their best pool, which is important for the tournament. Uh, we don't see guys, you know, kind of limping across the finish line here, do we? No, no, not at all. And sometimes a schedule, unfortunately, can do that. I've seen it before. All right, lost one. Now you got a little, little thinner on this. Yeah, but I don't think he wanted to force it on the three. You can see he hit that pretty firm, and it didn't move much. Yeah, cross table short of the side. Yeah, he may go twice. The five goes by the seven, so it's up to him, whichever speed he feels comfortable on the four. This is the angle. I, okay, he's going to go ahead and go past it. Mm. Oh, oh, my. Now, for a small man, he's one of the best I've ever seen at shooting over the ball. <laughs> I don't want to jinx him, but just really kind of paying him a great compliment. And the main thing, he usually doesn't poke at it. He usually still makes the stroke. Well, that's okay to poke at it anyways when you're over a ball. You know, you don't, you don't want much of a back swing. You just poke at it. I, well, think, he, I think he hit the cue ball a little more accurately that, like that way. Yeah, but of course it's not going to be your full stroke or anything like that, but I'm saying it's not a guidey kind of, you know, he just releases the cue real well, even though it's a, he, he's kind of elevated. Yeah, but this is the way the match was figured to be played. Very, very close. The whole way through. Yeah. Well, when you play, uh, you know, rotate the break, you know it's going to be a close match. Yeah, our TPAs brought to you by Pat Fleming and Q-Tech. 927 for Okulo, 880. O'Shawn with 44 balls made versus 38. 5-5, five, five, we're here on a player break. We're going to 13. All right, Dennis. Session. Please find your seats quickly. Thank you. Yeah, he's gotten a little chilly, so he's went to the jacket. Five, 5-5. Five. It's a race to eight from here. On a 13 total. Right, he's made two, so he's going to love that. The two drifting up for a decent shot. What's the three doing? Oh, my. Well, and, uh, and also the uh, the angle that he has is really, isn't really a, no, but, a good angle you know, to do anything with the three. No, now it's covered up. But if it had opened up, he would have just rolled this in and taken a little shot. He's a little funny on the cross side bank as well. Meaning yes, it, it, it just doesn't lay that great. So. And he's got too much angle to, to yeah. go inside and... Try to play on the short side of the three. You got to just open the two up here and put them behind the five here, Billy. I mean, you got to chop on the right side of the two and come two rails and put them behind the five. Now the two's going to go up near the seven or past it, but you want to put the two near the three, don't you? Yeah, but if that's you can? that's that's drawn behind the five if you do that. Oh, okay, all right. You see what I'm saying? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I would I just say, hey, the two's going to be open a little bit, but I'm supposed to be able to get him behind this ball. He oh, might be going behind the seven here. I know. This is going to leave an easy jump or easy kick, though. Yeah, or even a look at the ball. That That's surprising to me. Um, he must have feared not getting the snooker and the two being open, but it looked like to me with the nine and the five, Pretty easy to get back behind that five ball overall for Dennis. Like a half ball hit with a high right English, right? Catching a couple of rails. So he's trying to lengthen the game. What's he doing here? I don't know. I got oh, he's, oh, is he trying to cut bank it and bring, bring the cue ball behind the five like this? Yeah. So... Again, he was more concerned. He was really trying to make sure the two got a little tough. He's going to have to make a good shot here. Mm -hmm. Come back up table or the bank on the three. Ooh. I might kick behind this and just knock it past the seven. 
I don't know if I, I really go for this unless I'm going into the seven. Uh, okay, that's a nice call. shot, yeah. Simple, right? Just keep it pretty that's simple with call. the three like it is. I thought that he had the, uh, the look on the two to do that. He missed a bit of, uh, maybe he was in fear, for, fear of running into the seven. Yeah, and if something bad happens, you probably kind of trap yourself on the three maybe, so. Now here's where he can make a little bit more of a calculated kick, knowing where the what what's going on with the three ball. And he's gonna jump. Wow. What's he doing with the jump here, Billy? This is surprising to me. I thought he wouldn't mind kicking to the side rail with some top and kind of just going through the two downward with, with the cue ball, knowing how the three is. Yeah. Jump yeah. combination here? Well, if he's got the jump cue out, it looks like he wants he wants to get some get some action here. Playing the two into the eight. Long jump over the seven, though he might land on the two. If he does, watch out! Some could go off the table. Well, he's, he's tied up the five a bit. He's left the two in a real tough spot. Man. He can't come backwards easy off of the, the good side of the two. Do you bank this back and forth and bring the cue ball a couple rails behind the 6-3? You know, like a three-cushion shot, cut the two a little bit, go long rail, in rail, bring the cue ball oh, back I and double bank saying. the two back over yeah, where it's uh, at now. It's, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's available. It's available. Well, we roll out to this shot sometimes. You're usually on the rail with the cue ball when you're playing this shot, yeah. but... I mean, you just double bank it where it's at now and run the cue ball two rails behind the 6-3. He's banking to make it. He, I mean, not terrible, I guess. but And he's got a little protection with the 5 or no? Might be able to play the 9 here. I know, maybe. He, uh, cut the 2 into the 9, go two, two rails cross, cross table with the cue ball. He's got, a lot, he's got sideboards with the 8. He's, yeah. There's a lot of ways he can make the 9 here. I agree. And he also can play a safe cue ball. Yeah. At least leave distance. Yeah, well, you're going to get distance. It's a funny shot a little bit in my mind coming coming back with the cue ball. He's sizing it up now. I'd have to make him a favorite to win this game from this position. Uh, he's going to get up behind it. Not really offering a good safety, I don't think, anyways. Usually this position right here is very difficult. Now, if he can shave the three and hold it behind the six and go behind the seven simply, that would be the shot. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, if, if it's laying well. Well, I think he may have to almost do that anyways. He's trying to see if he can shave the three and run the cue ball behind the five, and oof, I don't see that happening. Oh, he can hit this very softly. Very softly. That's what he's going to do. Simple snooker here. Oh, oh wow. He's going out with it. You believe he did that? I thought that he could just brush it, hit it very softly, leave, and he leaves nothing that way. An easy kick, but no shot. Yeah. That's what you're saying, yeah. Okay, seven behind the three, cue ball behind the six. That's kind of what I see. When you're shooting this, I said it yesterday, watch how they kind of settle at the same time, Billy. When you're hitting this ball right, watch the cue ball on the three kind of stop the same time. That's kind of the pace you want to feel. Yeah, you want to hit half a ball. Right. But, you know, a lot of times you're putting a little left English on that. So as you're swerving into a half a ball kind of. But you, it's good to get the feeling of, like I said, both the cue ball and the object ball kind of resting at the same moment or near. I've seen a crazy scratch off the top side of this when you have to curve at it. Like that. Oh See my. that scratch? Oh my God. <laughs> it's Whoa. amazing. Well, the spin, you're coming across it with the left, so if it hits any of that point on the outside or inside, it kind of grabs it and swallows it up. Okay, now he has an option here. He's got to make a decision whether to play the nine ball or play the uh, bank position, on the five. Position on, yeah, play position for the bank on the five. I think he's totally supposed to play the bank on the five. 
The six is easy. He's nine out of ten on the bank on the five, I think. Right? Yeah. I'd say he's a pretty big favorite. Is that uh, too hard? No, that's perfect. Perfect, because he doesn't mind drawing to this rail where he's standing. I, I like to see him do it. At least don't baby it. There you go. Go ahead and put the stroke on it. Yeah. Seen that bank from him too many times. <laughs> and plus, uh, he's very familiar with that bank. Oh, my. Wow. Kind of oh. stood up off it. Kind of didn't take as many strokes as he normally does. That's so unlike the way he plays. Though. Yeah. Scratching his head now. Yeah. Okay. Albin actually, some expressions I've never seen from Albin in a match. Really kind of a awkward wry smile in a sense. You just got to bear down on every shot. I remember Absolutely. When I, yeah, I remember when I was playing my best pool. I never missed an easy shot. Yeah. I mean, I never missed an easy so it's kind of like taking dead aim, right? Yeah. yeah. I However you want to label all, it. All, yeah. all easy shots. Because if you never miss an easy shot, you're going to be really surprised at how often you're going to win. Yeah. You're not going to lose often. That's right. And you really, you know, and when you do lose, it's probably going to be a close match. <laughs> yeah. Because the game is filled with a lot of routine shots. You know, it's just how you address them. And what they do is when you address them, you know, like you do the others, they start to look a little more similar as well. You know, they're not going to look the exactly, same. Yeah. They're not going to ever look the same, a hard shot and a simple shot. But the closest you can make them the same, a little more similar, it sure does help. Well, when you bear down on every shot and never miss a simple shot, you're very confident regardless of what type of shot you shoot because you're so accustomed to pocketing balls and not missing balls. Yeah, and here's our rack track from AccuStats, and it hasn't been as big a swings as we've seen the entire week. No, it's been uh, pretty consistent. Yeah. We're trading off games here. Yeah, that and, you know, sometimes, you know, I know these guys, so I could see certain things that cause misses um, just because that's it's the same things that cause a lot of our, us players misses and, and whatnot. But there it was just a, I didn't see anything wrong with the queuing, just maybe a little bit of a one-stroke and go, maybe. Maybe just not bearing down on that six ball right there. Yeah, he didn't bear down on you. Yeah. He shot it you know, very, very quickly. quickly. Yeah. yeah. He, he really missed it badly because he did see what, what happened to the cue ball. Yeah. So Corlo going to have to shake that off. Problem is, giving up the lead. Alvin's at the table. Yeah, one thing about Aquilo, he can't shake it off. Yeah, easily. absolutely. Because he just doesn't give up. Well, you know, you, you talked about it earlier. He uh, very much is accustomed to things being tough. Doesn't really get many many easy games, and he certainly, certainly likes games, so that means he's playing tough games. But he's also seen it all. There's nothing he hasn't seen, a scenario, a score, situation <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> yeah so the four sitting on the point a little funny with the five on the opposite side pocket so i'm wondering if he now the four does go up in the corner past the side not so sure it's playable in the side so he's going to come two rails oh he's going to play the three off the four if he can good chance he's in per perfect line to do that too yeah couldn't have placed it Place it with your hand any better than. Yeah, just a small cut on the three. As long as he doesn't overhit it, he can catch the four a few different ways. He'll just go forward a little bit. Yeah, just like that. That was excellent speed of the cue ball for position on the three. Yeah, you think he may. Bring this back past the six to the end rail. Yeah, you if, know, not if, to flirt. If, if you know, it's, if it's thin on the five, I think he go 
at least to think about it. Yeah, it must not be that bad. He definitely played it for a thin one, though. Now, is he going to come to the backside of the six? Is he going to kill the cue ball? I doubt with inside. Maybe does he run this three rails for the six in the upper right? Might play them both in the same pocket, you know, if, if it's Ooh, off the rail far enough. This looks thin to do that. Yeah, that's I thought he had. Oh, that's going to be. Yeah. That's too heavy. And I'm really surprised he played with that thin. No, that looked like too heavy of a stroke. He's talking about the rails, but. He played a thin angle, and he got into that quite a bit. I'm very surprised he played that thin angle because you're coming well, across yeah. the line pretty hard right there, right, on the six? He's asking about something. I mean, that, was, that wasn't even close for him to get shaped. I mean, he really butchered that shot. Well... Like I said, he's kind of talking about the rails. And if he has a look, he's still the big favorite here to win the game. Really excels at these shots. Killing the cue ball off of two cushions. Yeah, like that. Man, what a luxury that is to be able to recover that easily mm -hmm. after a, such a blunder. Well, that's a strong mind. Of course, he's a skilled player, but uh, a lot of skilled players out here is the ones that have that strong mind, right? Yeah, yeah because they keep making those tough shots. Yeah. When needed. And now two-game lead at 7-5. to five. I think he's got to change the break a little bit, maybe. That being Dennis. Here's our TPA brought to you from AccuStats and UTEC. Score 7 to 5, 58 to 42 on balls pocketed for Ocean. Air is 6 apiece, so just a matter of a few opportunities and balls pocketed. A little higher TPA and up over 900 for the reigning World Nine Ball champion. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Dennis is such a comfortable player, and you know, he's he's faced adversity so often. Then, well, knows of what it's like to come from behind. He's done it a lot. Yeah, he's gonna hate Ouch. this, and uh oh, but, and still wasn't a complying break, even though he got an awful kiss on the cue ball. And there's a one nine that yeah. I would have to entertain myself. Yeah, you have to take it. A look at a it. Look at it. Yeah, it's pretty like easy. It. Pretty easy combo. He did miss one in the last match on the yeah, nine in the same side pocket. Yeah, and, yeah. and that was I thought yeah. he made the right shot move into the combo. That's how easy the combo was, I thought, and how funny he was on the six. He's not gonna miss this though. He won't baby it. Shoot it a little bit. So now Kulo has to wait again, but the worst part trailing by three games now and we're past the halfway point of this match going to 13. And you notice how much more angle he has coming downward on the rack, on the cue ball during the break. If it's not just right, he's not getting enough into the rack. Our break performance average, Ocean at 667, Lokulo at 571. So, yeah, out of, what is that? Seven breaks for, for Dennis. He only has four successful. So he's not taking a chance, in my opinion, on non-complying. Watch how much heavier he's hitting the one. Get a lot more action on the balls. Yes, he is. Oh, yeah. Yes, he is. Dead snookered, it looks like, on the one. He may have a sliver of the top of it, but unless he gets a little more of it, I don't think he can do much from there. May roll out a, an inch or two to a kick shot behind the two. Now, the problem with that is he better be careful. Dennis may jump bank the one in. I've seen him Where's do it. Where's he going to jump bank it in? Well, if he rolls the cue ball a little bit more behind the two, 
to leave the underneath kick on the one. That's usually what these guys do in this situation right here, Billy. You know, push the cue ball over here a little bit, just maybe a few inches away from where he's at. But where's Dennis going to jump kick, jump it in? He's going to jump bank the one in, oh. cross side. So don't worry. Don't think he won't take it on. Uh, well, I, well I, if I knew he was going to do that, I'm going to give him a chance. Well, he, he might take the kick as well, but I'm saying don't think that's out of the realm. Dennis knows all the kicks, is, you know, obviously. Now he's looking at rolling out to an open one ball that doesn't go in the corner, and he's not worried about the side. But, man, would you roll out to an open one ball? Really? Well, I don't know if I would do that because Dennis is a pretty uh, crafty player. He can figure out a way to, to control both the one and the cue ball. Well, now he's rolled Somewhere. out to where the one's... You know, partly shootable because you can hold the cue ball if you want. If you did want to shoot it in the side. Now, what's he going to do? Does he float the one by the seven and kill the cue ball and let you know just use the seven? Yeah, that's pretty, pretty risky though. Yeah. Well, do you come off the side of the one and come towards in between the eight and nine with the cue ball, trying to use the seven and the nine as a blocker? You could hold uh, the one even, behind yeah, the seven, that's right? That's not a bad option because even if you hit the eight, you're going to get behind the nine that way. And you have the seven there to block the one as well. Yeah. So just contain the one here, it looks like. Yeah, I like that. Now, yeah. if you hit the eight, you got, you got the, well, see, you would end up behind the nine anyways. But that's a, and that's a very yeah. surprising push out. That's why I thought the push out was very surprising there, right? In my opinion, anyways, what do you think, Billy? Yeah. Anytime you push out to where you, you can hit either side of the ball when you're that close to the ball. And it didn't take much of a stroke or a hit on the one to get safe. See, at 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 best you're gonna hit you're gonna be looking at a long shot figure. Yeah, well he'd love that. I guess he's got a piece, so one rail at the six with the cue ball, crossing the one over, I think. Oh he hit it too oh he got fortunate there. Wow. So the jump cue's Did coming. Did he ever, huh? I think the jump cue's coming. It's pretty thin. He may be kicking across. All right. Such an accurate kicker, too. He'll hit the uh, the side of the one sending the cue ball. Or keeping the cue ball down table. Yeah. He's going to give up a, a starter. Nothing easy, but this man right here coming to the table doesn't need much. Yeah, but I don't think this is that tough of a shot considering the position of the one. It's not frozen. Off the rail about an eighth of an inch. Yeah, but you don't want to cinch it. No, you draw it back. I know, but I'm saying that's a difficult shot. I mean, you have to be pretty accurate. At that speed, you have a little slide, but not a lot. That's sweet. Um. Sometimes that's, that's uh, what a three-game lead will do. Right. You know? And you really have to give it to Alvin and really all these guys. They've gotten better during the, each match plus during the matches, it seems like. Yeah, he's got a nice angle on the, on the four. We like to draw down table. Yeah, about but just past head. the side, though, right? Well, uh, head string, maybe. I think you, I don't think you want to get too thin on the five. No, but these guys, they'll take a little cut before flirting, getting straight on the five. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, you don't draw all the way on the table. No. Yeah, the head string is. That's too far. Yeah, That's too far. Not going to play natural now. He's going to have to like force it to the cushion. Sometimes when you force balls like on the, on this type of an angle, you uh, at times you lose the cue ball. Yeah, but he's so smart, he'll recognize he's not going to get a perfect angle on the six. He will stun towards the six, but with the seven near, he's not going to go crazy on this shot, I don't think, anyways. Yeah, the seven ball is Is two. he coming two rails to the center? He might be coming two rails. Oh, look, three rails to the center, excuse me. A what a right, shot. A little high right ball there, straighten it out off that side cushion. Yeah, he can come three rails with inside here. He can come across. Yeah, it's so natural to go with the inside ball here. 
You're not flirting with any danger at all. It's more a roll. Yeah, you're rolling your ball. Kind of, you're going with the way it wants to go anyways, basically. You're just helping it a little bit with a little side spin. Well, it's going to be 9-5 to five here in a moment. Dennis will be at the table to break. I think it's a, you know, he's never out of it, but it, it is nearing a now or never kind of situation because this guy looks like he's getting a bit stronger. He is getting a lot stronger. His TPA now has probably increased to about 925, 9.30. So a little bit of a roll there on, on uh, off of Dennis's safety to get snookered up behind the ball, but then, you know, double in the pocket with the cue ball there, almost scratching. Dennis made a good hit, but then Alvin made another nice out. Yeah, and that careless shot that Dennis missed. It's starting to loom big right now because uh, it, it's given uh, Ocean, uh, you know, a lot of air. He, he, he's, he's really playing well now. A couple of lucky breaks here and there. Now he's looking at a four-game deficit. But Dennis, look at him. He's so composed. He looks so comfortable. He does. He looks yeah. comfortable. Not talking to himself or shaking his head or battling, you know, within himself. He's just calm. I guess that's how, what you have to do to, uh, to uh, give yourself the best, the best chance of uh, surmounting deficits uh, of this type. Yeah, and definitely got to stay focused, that's for sure, and calm. Everyone does it a little bit different. Similar in ways, but different. Some of them don't do it. Exactly right about that. <laughs> you know, Very different, you might say. <laughs> yeah. They beat themselves up, and it cost them. Uh, oh, nine ball. Watch out. Oh, my. Oh, this is a, so that's two nines on the break here in the last two matches for Ocean. The balls are punishing all Colo because he got careless and missed that gimme. It's very easy to believe that when you're sitting in the chair watching all this. And now 10 to 5. And just imagine, you know, of course this match is far from over. Still needs three games. And any time I felt like my opponent needed two games, I felt like I still had a really good chance. One game. Of course, you feel half as good, but you're still fighting. Um, but just imagine seems like Ocean's getting better, you know, each year, and he's only 31 years old. Well, he even took more off. Now he's made two. I don't think he can comply, though. He made two, though, so oh, he's okay. okay. Two. Well, this will test where his mind's at for Dennis. Needs all his focus here on a long three ball. See, he's not taking much time getting down. <laughs> and still knocked it in. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, he had an ideal angle to drop nicely for the four for starters. Yeah, but can he'll afford a mistake from here? Not saying he should have one, but. He's got that two stroke mode. Yeah, he's going to need a little angle here to work the ball to the back side of the eight for the same pocket, I think, anyways. Oh, no, he played the short side here. Huh. I, I thought that may, might get a little thin. Does he just go three rails here, Billy? See what he does. Right on that borderline. Yeah, perfect speed. In position before the cue ball is. <laughs> <laughs> Quick business when, from uh, the Filipino. When you pick up your pace, the speed of your pace, do you think you get two games for running out? I don't. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, no, just you know. we've seen Dennis vary his, his rhythm around the table in, in all kinds of different matches, all kinds of different games, all kinds of different settings. Yeah. So. Or maybe you feel like you can catch up in a hurry. 
No, no. It's I believe it's almost like a like a. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, like a a luck charm almost that when he speeds up, maybe he can feel a little roll coming his way when he needs it because. I'll tell you, I haven't seen it too much from the start of matches. I've seen it much more when he's trailing than when he's ahead. Now, I've seen it a, a few times when he's about to finish somebody off, kind of like a Sky Woodward. He d you, does that a lot. Well, if, if you don't see it from the beginning, but you see it when he's trailing, why? Well, like I said, I just told you, I think it's a, a luck charm kind of thing. Like he's had some fortune speeding it up before, maybe got a, a little bit of a break from the pool god. All right, and oh. here we go. Oh, no. He made one on the break. He's going to hang the two. Oh, it's deep. If he can't get at that ball, this is going to be think tough. He, I think he can. Well, I don't know. Even a little twirl, I think he can. Yeah, he's awfully stretched to, but he to has be to twirling stretch, it. That's exactly, yeah. He has to stretch, too. Yeah, I think he can get at it just because he doesn't have to go by much of the six, meaning I think he will need to swerve the ball here, but it doesn't take much. Yeah, the good thing for him, look at the three. Got to use the extension here. Laid up on the side rail. No, he wants to take the extension off. I mean, he uh, might need it to stretch. No, I, but, I think he should use the extension here. Well, a lot of them take it off when they have to swerve the ball, okay, because the weight of the cue is, is different. But as far as reaching the shot, now that's one thing. But you'll see a lot of the guys not want the extension on whenever they're swerving the cue ball. The good thing for Alvin is the three is very handy on the left side rail. Yeah, that wasn't that tough. And speed wasn't that difficult. He gained the angle. And I have to come with a shot here, moving the cue ball. And the problem is, mm. if he doesn't get all the way out there, he's got to contend with the eight. If he gets a little thin on this four ball right here, the eight's a big problem. That's, yeah. that's why he's entertaining going yeah. forward. Yes, he is. And I, I know exactly what you're referring to. He's got to get good on the four. Yeah. You know, he's got to see where the angle of it, where the cue ball is now he's in not even, to the four. He don't even want to fool with the eight. So he's going to come forward two rails between the nine and five and take on a little bit of an angle into that side pocket. The good thing for him is it laid nice to get close to the four and be very accurate drawing the ball. It looks like he's drawn into the nine, though, Billy. Right? You think so? I, think I, I don't think he's dead straight at like all. Looks like it's going to go past the nine. To the high side? Yeah, the high side, yeah. Oof. You, that's not the type of angle you want to force that. I would rather draw through the nine than force it above it. See, like that. You don't want to cut oh. that ball. It creates a very bobbly ball in the side pocket that wants to rattle and spit out unless you hit it absolutely perfect. Well, you called it perfectly. I, I thought that he... I thought he had the angle to draw past Well, if he wanted nine. to force it with a less tip, kind of like a stun, but that stun does create a ball that wants to miss a lot. And I just kind of felt like it looked like he was going to maybe draw through that nine. But I'll tell you what, again, he's getting stronger. Well, yeah, he can see the finish line. Yeah, no reason to fear. You, know, you build this lead knowing that Dennis can only, you know, want run one rack at a time, right? So till this the score gets a little closer, there's no reason to really sweat. You're playing great. You've been here before. And what I, another thing I was trying to figure out the other day: Does Alvin Ocean really have a big title in the U.S.? Not sure of one. Well, you made reference to the fact that when they travel across that pond, they normally don't do well over here. Well, that's been the tradition for guys going coming from here overseas and vice versa. In many years, it took a, you know, who was the first non-American to win the, the uh, U.S. Open? I mean, I guess you could say Spanish Mike from Puerto Rico, I guess, but he was a longtime well, citizen here, right? Yeah, he's a citizen. Yeah, so maybe Efren Reyes, is, is yeah, he the first? I would think that... Uh, and then it went on to be Ralph Suquet was the next, I believe. Uh, Mika, no, Mika Eminent, excuse me. Yeah. He won twice, then Ralph won, then Alex Pagalian won. I think Mika won. went back-to-back, back, didn't he? Yeah, he did. 
and he lost his first match the second year. The first year he went undefeated. The next year he lost his first match, winning some 14 or 15 in a row to win in the final. But it, it just is. It's very difficult to go across uh, and play your best pool. You now the guys these days, they stay in great shape. You know, they're used to the flying a little more. They plan it out very well. And they're not going to be ignored uh, from, you know, from the practice table, right? They're going to hit balls. Do you think it's like uh, it's a change of uh, uh, their, their sleeping habits? or their... Yeah, just more in tune with everything. You know, there's information on everything these days, how to you know, sleep better, how to travel better, how to train better. And not just for pool, just for people. All right, Dennis. Made two on the break a lot. Watch the five ball. Oh, that's a non-complying. So if it gets snookered, he's going to hate this. Look how the balls ended up. All about seven balls on that side of the table. Yeah, but he cut the one a lot, though. I understand that it's... Uh, but see, the difference in Dennis's break compared to the main rest of the tournament, really, is he's been depending on making the one and the corner ball. That way it doesn't matter if he complies. Right. Oh, I can't believe he's not kicking two rails at this. Up to the top rail, Billy, side rail. There's a lot of good things that can happen that way, right? Correct. This is a tough jump shot with the seven so close. Well, you have to understand that at this point, drilling 11 to 6, his judgment may be a little impaired here. Well, that's exactly what I was going to ask you. Is this a sign of frustration? Oh, got a double kiss. It looked like he made the bank, but it kissed the cue ball again. Now Albin can make maybe take a mild chance here on the two ball if he falls nice. Now the thing is, with 11-6 lead, he still wants to make him earn it. Doesn't want, doesn't want to take too much of a chance. And he wants this angle. Now, this is tricky because there's two balls covering up the three. You know, you could easily yeah. go to the rail and come behind them and be okay. You could easily go into it a lot of times and come loose. But with that extra ball there, that being the five, makes you things very to, tough. Yeah, you're not going to fall behind a ball. Yeah, easily. easily. <laughs> yeah, very much. Now, if he can go to the rail and kick it out. And for sure not hit the four coming in. Yeah. You know, he can kind of rip at it a little bit and probably comes loose with a shot on the three of some sort. Yeah, I think if he go, go, opts to break a mile, he's going to have to go to the rail. Yeah. But you you know how sometimes you think you're going to go to the rail, but you catch that four coming in a little bit, and that can ruin the shot. Yeah, that's what that five ball was doing. That third ball being there really complicated things. the jump here yeah kind of going towards that scratch a little bit now the good thing is when you jump it you can hit a little thicker on a ball actually and cut it in because your ball's in the air a little yeah, bit you're hitting the top of the ball right but i don't know if that helps him here he might be hitting the bottom side of this and coming for safe yeah like that taking a chance of getting safe I don't blame him right there. That was a difficult situation, and he yeah, had a lot of balls, him. right? Yeah a lot of, yeah, a lot of possible interfering balls going back. Dennis, you made a little comment of some sort, a little entertaining, like, yes, maybe. Yes, I get a shot. That was center cut. Difficult here, though, Billy. I mean, can you kill it easy? I don't know if he can or not. This looks a little thin to be killing the ball. He pulling this into the five? Oh, I was thinking he might. Oh do. my! I was thinking that he pulled into the five, but uh, that's that's not what he did. He that's not what he tried to do. He, 
letting him to push it across, but uh, he's got to pocket the ball. And he's just going to thin this. I think he goes can go by the five. He's going to have a little speed on the cue ball. I think the five goes by the nine maybe, too, if he just ends up backside somehow. I don't think that happens, but. All right. He did get backside of yeah. it, didn't he? <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen, <laughs> but uh, it did. Yeah. He should be fine. I think he's got a follow path between the 6-9 if he wants to. The 6 goes in the side by the 7, I believe. Oh, maybe not. Is it too steep to elevate and hold it for the 6 and the lower right, right I corner? think so. I think so. I think he's got to move the ball. This is the shot I saw. Two rails between the 6-9 to the center of the table. That's the shot I kind of saw. Let the ball run. It wants to go there anyways. Yeah. Anytime you can take on any shot. And especially the little more difficult ones, and move the cue ball where it wants to go, yeah. your percentages go way up. And barring something that we don't expect, it's going to get to the hill with a massive lead. All right, just a little pinch stroke on the bottom part of the ball. Oh, he moved across. I thought he normally holds that ball on that side with the little tip position, you know? Yeah, he must have really liked the angle to do what he did. He didn't want to flirt with the side at all. And why should he now? 926 on his TPA, 50. Almost you know, 75 points higher, almost 74. You can see it right there, 87 to 52 on balls pocketed. Mark Wilson says that always tells the tale. Yeah. Uh, I would think so. Well, you would think it does. It's, I mean, maybe an obvious statement, but, I mean, it, uh, it, it, it doesn't lie. That's for sure in Alvin Ocean up 12 to 6. And I'll tell you what else tells the tale. Balls missed. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> that tells the tale, too. Had big crowds here all week. Now Albin won the lag in position. He'll break, have four breaks to win this match from here, Belly. Ask for much more than that. Now well, he's going to think like this if the one agrees. I think it got there. It's super thin on the well, I don't know. Maybe on, not. On the monitor, it looks like that. Uh, no chance of making it. cut it in the corner without, without scratching, so. I thought it was going to come up for the side, but it's a little past it. Don't really see much of an easy safety either, right? Yeah. Looks like yeah. he's trying to attack here. And yeah, when balls are positioned closely to the cushions, then, yeah, then safeties become much more difficult. Yeah, what Billy's talking about is the other balls. Yes. Yeah, not the one. I thought he might be able to make it. Wow, what a sweet shot that was. And took a lot of nerve to ease a thin cut. Usually you want to put a little extra on it to help the cut shot. Does it look like uh, Okolo's going to have another opportunity at the table? Well, after that shot, you would think not. He's gotten himself in a good position. He can do a lot of what he likes to do here in the next few shots. Get the cue ball to the center of the table on the three. I think he'll play the five in the side, it looks like. Doesn't obviously he doesn't mind playing from underneath the balls. We've seen that. But you gotta, he's got to stay below the five, though. He doesn't want if he if he's going to play it in the side. 
Yeah, because and Billy's saying that because the seven doesn't pass the nine all the way up. So he has to have some type of angle to move the cue ball above the seven. Now he's entertaining moving the cue ball a little more on the five. And for me, I don't mind that at all. And the reason why I say that is it just gives you a lot more options. He's going for the side, and if he falls, he got underneath it. He's going to have to stun it a little bit, though. And I say shoot into a small pocket with a little bit of speed. He don't have to make it. No. You know, he's a big favorite, but, but he's I so, wouldn't be so, that surprised if it didn't. It didn't yeah. fall. He's so in tune with the stroke, though. He won't overhit the ball. He'll get the most out of everything is what he's been doing. So made that look easy. Cue ball where it's at be pretty ideal. A little, little shy, maybe, or perfect? <laughs> it looks like it's a little short there. Maybe dead straight, actually. He's just going to draw the cue ball back. Uh, if he wants to get real comfortable with the cue ball, he'll cheat the pocket a little bit, but I think it's just a straight draw. He won't flirt with the scratch. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Certainly made it look easy. Yeah, and Alvin Ocean, a nice, the first one to clap, Dennis Okulo. He's, he knows he was just outperformed here tonight oh, in this absolutely, final. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, that doesn't happen too often, so hats off to Alvin Ocean. Hats off to Pat Fleming and, of course, yourself, Billy and Cardona, Mark Wilson, everyone who put in so much work. Thank you, JJ. Yeah, and the fans, of course, uh, so appreciative and knowledgeable here in Earl Folk. Uh, we'll be back for the International next year. You heard that from Pat Fleming, and I think that kind of... Maybe uh, sums it up as Alvin Ocean Player of the Year. Not only international nine-ball champion, but I think he's going to win 2021 Player of the Year. Yeah, well, you know, with, with the accomplishments that you mentioned, I think yeah, I think he will have as well. Yeah, uh, I hate Vegas to death, so uh, 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 I'd rather be here. Uh, yeah, thanks, of course, to Pat. Uh, thanks to his team. Uh, you did a great job, as always. Uh, you improve every year more and more, and uh, hope to see you next year. I got a secret for you. So hold your applause. With that win right now, you become the number one ranked player in the world. Presentation by Pat Fleming, Alvin Ocean, give it up! One time, baby! We'd like to thank all you guys for coming one time for Pat Fleming. To God. All right, we love you all. Thank you. The International 
open 2021 next year bigger and better.